I just received an email stating that the overnight charging rate of 54 pence per kilowatt hour has had its hours extended for the second time with Instavolt. It's now 8 p.m. in the evening to 7 a.m. the next morning. And for the first time, that discount is now shown on their website, although you do have to search for it. Surely if they email everyone with the news, it should be a feature item on that website, not hidden away. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. Our Dave Takes It On, we're constantly out on the road looking for new charger locations and installations. And we recently chanced upon an installation in progress at Burger King in Preston. The installers were quite chatty and that was when they revealed that they would be the ones installing the new Instavolt hub, uh, now called a super hub, down in Winchester, due to open before Easter. That one has now opened. But they said that on finishing in Preston, it was already 8pm when we left them, they were headed to the depot in Manchester to pick up more of the chargers, put them on the back of the lorry, then head down there where they would meet up with others to complete the installation on this new site. While we applaud these installations, in this case what they call a super hub, there are just two issues that destroy the benefits. The first of those, Instavolt has the habit of installing chargers with a maximum power rating of between 100 and 160 kilowatts. Well, while the ultra budget end of the market will not be able to use even this power, for example, Renault 5, Citroen EC3 and Fiat Grand Panda all have maximum charging rates of 100 kilowatts. The average EV today, like the Ionic 5, the Skoda Elrock and the Volvo EX30, all can take far more, often more than twice this speed. And with battery technology advancing at the pace that it is, there are now several EVs that can charge to 80% in under 17 minutes, some of them down as low as 10 minutes. And these chargers will shortly be relegated to the lower leagues. They're going to end up a bit like the old electric highway 50 kilowatt dual bay chargers you can still find lurking in the background on some motorway services. Surely as a company, if Innsvold can see that the maximum power that the next generation of EVs can handle is two, three or sometimes four times more than the chargers they're currently installing, they must start becoming concerned about their future. But the real killer is the fact that the base price for charging using Instavolt is 85 pence per kilowatt hour. That's the highest price in the UK, apart from the extortionate oil giants like Shell and BP, who recently stretched that up to 89 pence. Well, as part of our research, we regularly look at occupancy rates. It is public knowledge, in fact, it's a legal requirement these days, that you can check if your particular location that you're heading to is empty, busy or totally full. The app is ideal for this and allows you to see in near real time what is going on. And I've yet to open the app and find any of their installations completely full. The larger installations, all of which we visited and filmed, seem to hover around the 10 to 20% occupancy rate. Plain English, this means that most are almost empty all the time. And even at peak times, we rarely see any strain on their use. If we take their existing hub in Banbury as a classic example, that recently extended to 40 chargers, the maximum power there is 160, again, although most are actually 100, 120 or 150 kilowatts. They're all priced at 85 pence. As we look today, 31 out of 40 are vacant. Well, to rub salt in the wound, the facilities are amazingly basic. It's well out of the way, it's not in the town centre, Yet nearby, the motorway services with grid serve 350 kilowatt chargers with better facilities. And there's also a Tesla supercharger open to all, priced currently without an app or membership, contactless only, 45 pence, but that goes up to peak price of 56 pence. To anyone surprised, Instavolt are pretty much empty. Well, Winchester today, a brand new flagship super hub with loads of publicity, is showing 35 out of 44 chargers available. It's hardly queuing out of the hub. And this probably explains why they've been discounting recently. They launched off-peak charging at a cracking price of 54 pence per kilowatt hour, and this is a good rate. Not the best, but it's a good rate. 
At first, the hours were seriously restricted. That made their use pretty much redundant. See, most interval charges are in small retail parks or fast food outlets, and these generally closed before the cheap rate began. But today we see the second extension of opening hours, so they now start at 8 p.m. and last until 7 a.m. Well, I wonder if people just switch their charging hours to off-peak, which would explain why the occupancy during the day is so low. But I've seen little evidence of this. Yes, they do get busier just after 8 p.m. and again just before 7 a.m. Oh, it's important to note, by the way, they claim the session is charged at the rate applicable when starting to charge. So if you plug in at 6.58 and you're there for an hour, that would all be charged at the 54 pence rate, even though it's gone way beyond 7 a.m. Well, the offering a of discount is never done unless there's an issue, maybe losing out to local competition or a general lack of use due to overpricing or wanting to give a boost to use for a promotion, for example. So here, the extension of the hours is a sign that they're not getting the occupancy rates during the daytime peak rates and not even getting enough off-peak unless they increase those available hours. It's not a good sign. In time, as many have found out, the only long-term solution is to price your product or your offering competitively in the long term and run short cut price promotions to give short-term boosts. The problem for most CPOs is that when they first started and when they produced their business plans, the figures they used must have looked really attractive as an investment. There was a massive growth of EV ownership and an average price at the time of 79 to 85 pence per kilowatt hour. But their plans were flawed due to three simple incorrect assumptions. See, with petrol and diesel cars, every single car owner must go to the petrol station to fill up. There's no alternatives. So the first mistake they made, they assumed that all EV owners, a rapidly growing number, would all use public EV chargers. Second, they assumed a rapid adoption of EVs that they would struggle to keep pace with. Third, they predicted that nobody would or would be able to offer cheap public charging. In reality, a number of CPOs have really come a cropper. First, the majority of EV owners do not ever use public charging at all. With an average mileage of just 8,000 miles a year, that equates to about 140 a week. The vast majority of EVs, having a range of well over 150 miles, even in the winter, there are a very large number of EV drivers who never ever charge out on the road, always at home on off-peak rates. There's an equally large number of people who regularly charge at home, but occasionally will go out and use the public charging networks maybe one, two or three times a year. Well, secondly, the adoption has been slower than expected. I'm still amazed at how they believe this would happen any quicker. So in the UK, we sell under two million new cars a year. So if we take an EV adoption rate as high as 20%, we hit just over that last year, that means that only 400,000 new EVs go on the road every year. Yet we have 35 million ICE cars on the road. So that means that's going to take at least 15 to 20 years to replace them all, unless the experts predicted that everyone would immediately ditch their ICE cars and go out and buy new ones at twice or three times the rate. Norway, probably the best EV adoption model in the whole world, destroys that theory. It has an adoption rate now of new sales of 90%, meaning people have virtually just stopped buying new ICE cars. But the penetration on the road is a minor 29%. 23% are still petrol, 36% diesel, 12% hybrids. Even Norway is predominantly ice on the roads to this day. Obviously, this is going to change over time as older cars fail and they're eventually scrapped. But a 28.9% adoption rate on the roads in 2024 is about where I predicted it would be. Now, obviously, in the UK, we're nowhere near that. EVs represent about 5% of the cars on the road, even though new sales now represent 24%. It's going to take time. Well, finally, they seriously misjudged pricing. When they started, nobody wanted to sell cut-price electricity. 
Then Tesla began opening up their supercharger networks to all, and the average price of the supercharger is 40p off peak and 55p peak. These prices offer a real alternative to the 79 and 85 pence that originally featured in their business models. Even those who hate Elon can still go to places like Arnold Clark, 55 pence, no membership or anything. Or go to EV on the move for 69 pence. And many other CPOs offer memberships with prices then down in the 40p range. That's serious competition. I believe that most of these dearer CPOs are just hanging on to their extreme prices for as long as they can. And in time, they'll have to cut them quite dramatically. That will start the price war of long predicted. So many viewers are just too impatient. Have patience. The EV public charging scene is changing far faster than you might think you are seeing. Instavolt will be one of the first victims. Well, the oil giants, the Shell and BP, that they just don't care. They're going to keep their prices high regardless. The best source for cheap petrol and diesel today is the supermarkets, not the chains like the Shell, BP and SO. They've long since given up being competitive, certainly on fuel prices. Now they make more money from their forecourt shops, food and drinks than from petrol. EV charging is undergoing a transformation, but it's slow. Have patience. I'm Dave.